BP reporting a surprising second quarter profit, tripling it to $1.8 billion net gain. This comes after the company announced a multi-billion dollar deal in the U.S. shale country. Here to discuss, P.K. Verlag, our president, and battle excuse me, Brattle Group Senior Advisor, Philip Verlager. Philip, your thoughts on the state of the energy sector right now and your prediction for catastrophe? <laughs> catastrophe, yes. Uh, $400 <laughs> is, is, a, is an extreme peak. Uh, look, I'm an economist. BP has been doing a really great job in, in reshaping itself since the Macondo uh, accident. And mm -hmm. it's, this is not surprising. I mean, it, it's while I don't follow company earnings, the BP people have been working extraordinarily hard to bring down costs and trying to bring the uh, bring the uh, uh, more production on. And it's kind of, BP is now leading um, among the super majors, I think. So, uh, but uh, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead, Philip. Finish your thought. Oh well, no. What, what I was going to say is, I mean, it's and and they will do better for the next year, year and a half as crude prices rise. Uh, you know, I don't see four hundred dollars as an extreme point, and I used it to make a try to call people's attention to this obscure regulation that could really upset the whole economy uh, in two thousand and you know lead to a situation where consumers were paying six seven dollars a gallon on election day in two thousand twenty uh, two thousand twenty something that nobody wants to see. John Hilsenrath, just to, to explain that, the International Maritime Organization rule that Philip is talking about requires shippers to use only low sulfur fuel, which will shift 5% of global oil demand away from high sulfur and toward low sulfur. That's going to bring oil prices to um, 2008 peaks by 2020. John? Well, I mean, yeah. Phil, Philip, I, I'd like to hear your explanation. You, you put the $400 uh, a barrel oil price out there. How, how do you get to that and how does this one obscure well, regulation get you to the, that kind of extreme prediction? What it does is, and you know, I laid out in 2005 why we were going to see $100 oil and the, re and the same reason. It's, what it does is put an extreme demand for low sulfur diesel fuel onto the refining system and they can't produce it. So what we're going to see is roughly a million to a million and a half barrel a day global decline in the use of diesel fuel uh, uh, across the industrial sector. That, that's what's needed to make the fuel for the, uh, for the maritime organization, uh, for, the, for the shippers. F uh, Philip, it's, Lindsay, it's Lindsay Bell here. I just, is there, you're talking about the refiners having to change, you know, the way they refine the oil. What about, there's another alternative of, of ships putting equipment onto on to their, to the boat to really address the emission issue. Is that a more efficient way? Is that a possible way of addressing this issue? Oh, oh, yes, Lindsay, that is that's absolutely a way. Uh, you can't, you, what you have to do is put the ship in dry dock and you put the scrubber, uh, scrubber material in there. So you scrub the fuel the way you scrub on a power plant. 6%, maybe 7% of the world's shipping uh, capacity will have scrubbers by 2020. There are 60 to 80,000 ships they think maybe 6,000, 6,500 ships will have scrubbers, but that, that leaves a huge number of ships not. And many of the large shipping companies are saying that they're going to rely on the oil industry to provide the low sulfur fuel. Uh, Maersk has made that statement, I believe, mm -hmm. as has the big uh, Costco uh, shipping company from uh, mm -hmm. China. So most of, the, you know, most of the shipping companies keep saying, look, it's the refiner's obligation to do this. Uh -huh. and the refiners aren't prepared to make it yet. Philip, it was good to see you. Please come back, sir. Often, yep, Philip Verlager.